Data Day, Seattle 2016. We're here with the diva of DEF CON, superstar of scraping, Ryan Mitchell. Welcome back. Thank you. This feels like a sports program. Welcome <laughs> back. So, uh, how are things in Boston? Uh, really hot and humid. Yeah? Yeah, I'm really glad I'm in Seattle now where it's always 65 and slightly overcast. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, well, maybe there's a future for you here. <laughs> in, in uh, Seattle. Uh, it's funny because uh, here, you know, we have uh, trams and trains and uh, monorails. It feels like the future to me. Uh, actually, there's really just the monorail that runs on time and it goes from one stop to another stop. Okay. Yeah. But it's impressive yeah. when I walk out there and I see all these things moving around because in Austin, we don't even have Uber. Right. Right. Have you heard? Yeah. Heard, and in yeah. Boston, we have actual subways. Yeah. So. And see, that, none of that makes sense. Uh, I, I overheard someone who came into Austin for a, a tech conference, and they were like, hey, I'm coming to Austin. Uh, and he's like, oh, you guys don't have Uber in Austin? He goes, like, do you guys have internet? You know? <laughs> It's, a, it's really, it's yeah, a shame. Yeah, see, Boston, New York, East Coast, actual subways, actual public transportation. Mm -hmm. I look at this and I'm like, oh, monorail's a cute experiment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you guys have some hmm. buses. Quaint. All right, yeah. very nice. You're from the future. Ah, oh, you West Coast cowboys. <laughs> oh, man, oh, I'm all in Peter frame over here. So, um, as we all know, Ryan Mitchell is a senior developer at HedgeServe. Yes. Yes. Now, wait, were you at HitchServe last time we talked? No. no. No, I like to change it up once in a while. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we create uh, reporting software for hedge fund managers. Okay. And I read the Wikipedia article about hedge funds, so I'm totally qualified to work in finance. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes. Uh, so you're managing portfolios and that sort of thing. Oh, right yes, yeah. all the time. Awesome. All the time. The SEC, uh, I'm pretty sure they're okay with it. Yeah, I you think. guys You yeah, guys are no. tight. No, actually, I just make the software for the managers, so I don't I don't interact with any real numbers at all. Okay. Um, I just make the software that will eventually go on to hold real numbers. Got you. And they run the yes. testing, and they're like, yes, we approve. Yes. Okay. Well, exactly. That's, that's good. That's good. So, of course, you spoke at Data Day, Texas. We spoke probably about six months ago, mm -hmm. and then uh, you spoke today just a little while ago. Yes. Right. And I understand that you're really cracking into new territory this year, sort of departure from the scraping that we know you for. Yeah. So I my talk is about stuff that isn't even in the book. Um, okay. So JavaScript on websites, client-side code run in your browser. Mm -hmm. This is code that your browser is executing, and it's the whole reason your web browser takes up like five gigabytes of memory <laughs> now, right? Because yeah. the web servers are sort of offloading all their stuff onto you mm -hmm. to execute and figure out. Mm -hmm. And so traditionally what web scrapers have done is they're, they're scraping bot programs go out, and they want the data that... that comes after the site has been fully rendered and all the JavaScript is already executed in there and in its final form, exactly what we see in the browser. So what they do is they have all these huge uh, tools and, and web browsers that they launch to try and execute all the stuff mm -hmm. uh, for them so mm -hmm. that they can then scrape the site and get all the data on, off the front end. Yeah. Um, and what I am proposing and what I was talking about and showing examples of doing is you can actually not bother with any of that at all. Mm. You can see what the APIs uh, that are being, you can use the APIs that are being sent from the server mm -hmm. to the code, mm -hmm. and you can see what's being sent, and all your data is right there, and you don't need to bother with actually rendering the page and loading all the stuff and executing on this JavaScript. Mm -hmm. You just go to the servers and say, hey, what data are you sending mm. to the code? Okay, so yeah, you're just capturing it from the middleman instead of scraping it from the, from the exactly. yeah. Exactly, okay. yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, and, and so are we going to expect a book uh, uh, in regards to that next, maybe? Uh, maybe a second edition? I don't yeah. know. Uh, updated. O'Reilly, if you're watching this, oh, yeah. second edition, 2017. Yes. Now with Java. <laughs> yeah. uh, good deal. How has the show been for you as far as an attendee goes? Have you had, get to see some cool talks? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I actually saw a talk earlier today about extracting content from news sites that was, mm -hmm. that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously every news site formats its content in a different way. They have different tags. The titles are up here. The titles are down there. You know, author bylines are all over the place. Mm -hmm. But um, I learned a lot about sort of uh, standardizing, uh, writing scrapers that can sort of standardize all that content to, uh, regardless of which site you're scraping from. So mm. I don't know. Maybe I'll work some of that stuff into the, the next edition as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. Um, and then how about, uh, let's see, for you, this is, uh, is this your third data day? Third, yeah. yeah. So I did one last year and then six months ago in January in Austin. Mm -hmm. And now I'm back. And you're back, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, that's cool. Um, uh, it, it's good to see that you're still 
um, you know, paving the way for those people who are trying to uh, get their scrape on. You know? <laughs> and, Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and last question is going to be, uh, you know, is there something that you're developing right now, something you're working toward, a problem you're trying to solve that you're, you're excited about? Yeah. Um, so actually, I have I mentioned I developed a lot of code for this talk, mm -hmm. and really it's just a command line tool at this point, sort of minimum functionality. Um, I have a lot of code in place and a lot of functions in place that, you know, sort of make it work. Mm -hmm. But I'd really like to put more of an interface on this um, and develop a lot a lot of other features. Um, so you can basically just point it at a domain and it'll spit back a list of all the APIs, internal APIs that that domain uses mm -hmm. in a really well formatted and documented way. And I have a, a GitHub branch for that. Okay. Um, so my GitHub name is R.E. Mitchell, mm -hmm. and this is the API finder branch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the latest branch I put up there, and I'm really hoping to keep developing that. Awesome, and you should look forward to going and checking that out. I will put a URL, as you can see, somewhere around here, uh, right there. Uh, uh, so you can go check out that GitHub uh, repository and look at all the goodness that's being put together by Ryan Mitchell. Thanks again for coming to talk to us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, I guess, maybe Data Day uh, Austin uh, 2017? Hopefully. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>